Welcome to Electra Online. Our next problem deals with a thin convex lens, and you would say, what's so hard about that? Well, it turns out they threw another twist in there. Notice our object. Our object is a rod, and instead of having the rod point straight up and down, it's actually at an angle. And they tell us that this angle right here is an angle equal to 3 pi over 2. The length of the rod is 2 centimeters and the focal length is 10 centimeters of the lens. And notice they tell us this vertical distance here of the image to be 30 times the square root of 3 over 13 centimeters and the distance from the lens to the beginning of the object is 40 over 3 centimeters. So let's read the problem. A rod of length 2 centimeters makes an angle of 2 pi over 3 radians. Oop, 2 pi over 3, the other way around. All right. 2 pi over 3 radians with the principal axis of a thin convex lens. The lens has a focal length of 10 centimeters and is placed at a distance of 40 over 3 centimeters from the object as shown in the figure. The height of the image is 30 times the square root of 3 over 13 centimeters and the angle made by it with respect to the principal axis is alpha radians. The value of alpha is pi over n radians, where n is equal to 2. And that's what we're trying to find. Now notice, I tend to use s for object distance and s prime for image distance. Some people use p and q, so that we don't get confused there. But what do we need to do here? Well, notice that this point of the object has an image over here, and this point of the object has the image over here. They want us to find the angle. And notice that we know the opposite side of this triangle, so we need to find the adjacent side. So here, this here, is the adjacent side. So it all comes down to finding the adjacent side. If you realize that that's it, because once you have the adjacent side and you are given the opposite side, you can find the angle by using the inverse tangent. So how do we find the adjacent side? Well, first of all, we can find this point right here because that's the image point of the tip and we can find this point right here because that's the image point of the bottom of the rod right here. So if this here is the object distance, I'll call it S1, then this here is the corresponding image distance S1 prime. And the end of the rod right here, this distance, well, we'll call that S2, that's the object distance to the end of the rod, and then over here, this would be the corresponding distance, let's call that S2 prime, or that's the corresponding image distance. But we need to know what this distance is. Now, this is 2 centimeters in length. This angle here is 120 degrees, that means this angle here is 60 degrees, and there's the adjacent side. So we could say that this adjacent side is equal to the hypotenuse, which is 2 centimeters, times the cosine of 60 degrees, which is 2 centimeters, times 1 half, which is 1 centimeter. So this is 1 additional centimeter added to 40 over 3. So this here would then become 43 over 3 centimeters, 1 additional centimeter from there to there. So now we know both object distances. We now need to find both image distances. The equation we use for that is that S1 prime is equal to S1F divided by S1 minus F. If you don't remember that, you can quickly derive that equation if you remember this equation. 1 over F equals 1 over S plus 1 over S prime, or 1 over S prime is equal to 1 over F minus 1 over S. Common denominator is the product of these two, so 1 over S prime is equal to S over fs minus f and then inverting it to get s prime is equal to fs over s minus f so notice that's exactly what we have over here so if you remember that great if not you can quickly derive it all right plugging in the numbers s1 s1 is 40 over 3 the focal length is 10 over here, S1 is 40 over 3, minus 10. So this would be 400 over 3, divided by, this would be 40 over 3 minus 30 over, 
uh, 3, yes? And so that would be equal to 400 over 3 divided by 10 over 3. The 3 scans out, and this is 40 centimeters. And we have a little kitty cat right here. Meet the new member of our family, and she's playing with the wires right there by my feet. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now we have S1 prime, which is this distance right here. Now we need to find this distance, S2 prime, because that allows us to find the difference between the two, which is the adjacent side. All right. So S2 prime is equal to go uh, S2 F divided by S2 minus F. So in this case, S2 is now going to be 43 over 3 times 10 divided by S2, which is 43 over 3 minus 10, which is equal to 430 over 3 divided by, that's 43 over 3 minus 30 over 3, which is equal to 430 over 3 divided by 13 over 3. Notice the threes cancel out, and so we're left with 430, should be a 3, over 13. All right, that sounds like an ugly number, but let's bear with it. So now we can find the adjacent side. The adjacent side is going to be equal to S1 prime minus S2 prime. So in this case, S1 prime is 40 minus S2 prime, which is 430 over 13. So common denominator is 13, so that would be 520 minus 430 over 13. So this is equal to 90 over 13. That's the adjacent side. So finally, we have the adjacent side. We have the opposite side. So now we can find the angle. So the alpha is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite side over the adjacent side which is equal to the inverse tangent of opposite side is 30 times the square root of 3 over 13 and the adjacent side is 90 over 13 like this notice the over 13 cancel out and 30 divided by 90 is 1 over 3 so this is equal to the square root of 3 over 3 hmm that can also be written as 1 over the square root of 3. And that I'm a little bit more familiar with because that realizes that therefore the angle must be equal to 30 degrees. Now, if you don't remember that, one way to do that is realizing that the tangent uh, of 30 degrees is equal to the sine of 30 degrees divided by the cosine of 30 degrees. The sine of 30 is 1 half. The cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. The 1 over 2 cancels out, so end up 1 over, over the square root of 3. So quickly you can see that the angle is 30 degrees. Now we have to convert that to radians. So this would be equal to pi divided by the 6 radians. And notice that the answer is supposed to be in pi over n radians, so therefore we can say that n is equal to 6. There we go. That is how we find the angle, the answer, and the angle, and the answer to this problem. Again, I don't think this is doable in three minutes. You got to be really fast, and it all comes down to realizing that this object distance is corresponding to this image distance, and this object distance is corresponding to this image distance. If you have that, then you have a quick inroad to figuring out those two distances, subtract the two from one another, find the ratio and find the arc tangent to find the angle. It's quite a problem. One more thing to learn about dealing with lenses when the object isn't straight up and down. And that is how it's done.